What trait automatically makes you think someone is stupid? I'll spend plenty of time explaining a new, absolutely necessary, medication to a patient, make sure to give them reliable resources to they can research it more if they want, etc. Everything's cool, right? Then their family member come out of the room 5 minutes later saying they don't want the patient taking it because my dad slash mum slash sibling slash Facebook friend had a terrible reaction to it or well this anti-vax flat earth blogger says lab in the royal will do the same thing without chemicals. My personal favorite is probably you just want to make money off of us as if I personally benefit from starting someone on fucking warfarin. I was at a barbecue yesterday and was asked if a woman's foot swelling was a blood clot. I have some first aid training, which includes checking blood clots, and work in biopharmaceuticals for a while, so it made sense for me to check it out. So I checked for DVT and told her it was probably salt retention given her diet and advised seeing a doctor anyway. The lady's niece, who works at a hair salon and has not gone to college, told her it was toxins and she needs some oils, unspecified, and an onion stuck to the bottom of her foot to fix it. The onion won out over my advice. Sounds like she'll be having a funny R visit in a few weeks when that CHF gets bad enough she has trouble breathing. Being oblivious to their surroundings. Example, stopping in the middle of a walkway to talk or look at something. It takes no time to just move to the side. When they have to have the last word on everything, no matter how wrong their reasoning may be. Regarding my dating life I avoid Zodiac girls because they usually come off dumb as shit. Yeah I agree. Had one a few months ago that was all about it. Even after the first three weeks of talking slash hanging out she told me how our signs were perfect matches. Tried getting me to watch YouTube videos on it. And in my perspective the videos were saying the complete opposite of us being soul mates. Giant drawn on eyebrows. When I told my wife she drew her eyebrow too high. She she looked surprised. I told mine she drew M too low and she was furious with me. People who use long words that don't mean what they think they mean. For example I'm inseminating from this. Although it makes you sound like an idiot, it's hilarious for everyone else. Being rude to cashiers, waitresses, etc. But how else am I meant to make myself feel superior? I make myself feel superior by comparing myself to my neighbors, who are objectively horrible people. My upstairs neighbors let their kids drop shit from the outside balcony, which then lands on our balcony and they don't come to pick it up. They also presumably play basketball with bowling balls, and get parking tips from Stevie Wonder. The power of crystals, manifesting, astrology, chakras. As a person who likes crystals because they look cool this is annoying as shit especially when you look for bismuth, technically a mineral but it has some crystal shit, is advertised as healing when it's slightly radioactive. People who say they have a high IQ, and not like other people and fuck society people. Wake up sheeple. People who believe clickbait sites on Facebook or other sites. There's been a lot of times that I had to prove to my mom and aunt how very untrue the articles are. Stubbornness determination is one thing but being pig-headed and refusing to accept when you're wrong is one of the most telltale signs of weak mind fool. Not normal religious people. I respect people that have an actual faith. The ones I think are stupid are the ones that will just get pissed at you, refuse to speak to you, or claim you're the reason things are bad simply because your religious beliefs don't equate to theirs. If they're a flat earther or anti vaxxer or worse, an anti-earther, scared face, flat vaxxer Standing in line for 10 minutes and not thinking about what they want to order until they get to the register. This is me. It's not because I can't choose it's because my anxiety gives me a fight or flight response as soon as I make eye contact with the cashier. I can have it rehearsed in my head over and over but as soon as I hear the cashier greeting me my mind immediately wipes all traces of intelligence. And the ones who stand there until every last item is scanned and the cashier gives them the total before they realize they need to pay. Various my opinion is as good as your facts type attitudes. 
or similarly, those who is opinions as substitutes for thought rather than as results of thought. Greater than various my opinion is as good as your facts type attitudes. Pretty much. Doesn't matter what debate it is or whether I agree with them or not. If they're spouting bullshit and saying it's as valid as hard evidence I'm done with them. That's not to say debunking evidence can't happen. If a study's been retracted or proven to be faulty or something that should be pointed out, but just saying that study doesn't count because I don't want it to doesn't count as that. When people attach their sense of self to their arguments, you can't disagree with them without it being interpreted as a personal attack. It doesn't leave them any room to revise their arguments, or adjust to new information. People who aren't willing to admit when they're wrong or are fighting just for the sake of winning an argument. I consider those people to be lacking in wisdom more than intellect. It's a hard thing to do to push your ego out of the way and certainly no one can do it at all times or in all situations. More than that though an argument can be about something that there is no evidence for or based on memories that can be true to both people on different sides of the argument. The reason this is bad is it strains the relationship with those around you to not strain the relationship of you with yourself or the idea of yourself and in that sense sometimes it can be better to not acknowledge others overvaluing the accuracy of your memory or way of thinking. Can't remember who said it but I heard something along the lines of you will never be able to prove to someone truly invested in a religion with all their relationships with friends, family, and their spouse depending on their belief of the religion to see a fallacy strong enough to warrant a change in belief as it would cost them everything they know and love to give in and it is reasonable not to at that point. Big Ego. Acting tough and smart and bigotry. This is a dead giveaway. Some loudmouth comes in running their mouth and telling us all about how great they are, often they're borderline stupid, and incompetent enough to not know how incompetent they really are. People who let one characteristic, race slash gender slash nationality slash politics slash etc, totally define who they are and how they live their life. Even worse, people who let one characteristic totally define, in their eyes, who you are. People trying to win an argument by saying how smart they are. Or just because they have an inflated ego. I can't be wrong because it's me we're talking about. One better syndrome, where no matter what your experience, your history, your anecdote theirs is better, worse, funnier. Refusing to listen to the other side of the argument because they're so dead set in their beliefs and convinced they're right. They can't even comprehend that the other side could even have the remote possibility of being valid. AKA two thirds of the teachers I've had over the years. Every person on the far right or left in politics. Racist. I have a family member who's like, oddly progressive with racism. Says stuff like them damn negroes deserve to vote just like us, I'm cleaning this up, or if those fucking queers want to get married it doesn't hurt me. It's oddly hateful and accepting in the same sentence. People who post daily on Facebook about removing negative people from their life. The weird thing about this one is that it's a healthy, mature, and usually difficult thing to remove toxic people from your life. But the people who are actually doing that are pretty much always doing it quietly because they are grown adults who don't have an appetite for drama. The more someone is boasting about removing toxic people from their life the more toxic the person is. I had a former friend like that. Dude would go on and on about how people turned on him. Then came my turn for the chopping block. I made a comment that painted him as wrong next thing I knew I was being blocked for being too toxic for him. Makes a mistake, instead of taking the blame and acknowledging what they did wrong, they blame the people around them. Tailgating. Can I just tag onto your comment to simply add bad drivers? I had a guy on a motorcycle nearly injure himself on my car this morning. He decided to stop at an empty roundabout. I entered the roundabout from another entrance and then he decided he would enter the roundabout directly in front of me from a dead stop. This guy got mad because he figured I should have stopped in the middle of a roundabout to let him in. Started yelling and giving me the finger, whole nine yards. People who think they have superior taste because they dislike popular things. Then they insist they have no idea who someone is. Justin Bieber? Who's that? Never heard of him. Is he an athlete or something? 
Game of Thrones? Doesn't sound familiar. New game show? My brother has a friend like that, Justin Bieber? Never heard of him. But I don't like pop music. I wasn't talking music. How did you know he's a pop star, then? I'm too cool for this. Greater than then they insist they have no idea who someone is. Obviously your examples are vast caricatures, but as someone who doesn't have a lot of popular interests, participate in social media, etc., don't assume that this is always an attempt to seem cool by not knowing. I genuinely have tons of moments where I have to say that I've never heard of something at all, or that I've heard the name and know nothing else. When someone disagrees with a good scientific study because it doesn't reflect their personal experience that they just thought about as you cited the evidence, irrational anger. What the fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little bitch? I'll have you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs, and I've been involved in numerous secret raids on Al-Qaeda, and I have over 300 confirmed kills. I am trained in guerrilla warfare and I'm the top sniper in the entire US armed forces. You are nothing to me but just another target. I will wipe you the fuck out with precision the likes of which has never been seen before on this earth, mark my fucking words. You think you can get away with saying that shit to me over the internet? Think again, fucker. As we speak I am contacting my secret network of spies across the USA and your IP is being traced right now so you better prepare for the storm, maggot. The storm that wipes out the pathetic little thing you call your life. You're fucking dead, kid. I can be anywhere, anytime, and I can kill you in over 700 ways, and that's just with my bare hands. Not only am I extensively trained in unarmed combat, but I have access to the entire arsenal of the United States Marine Corps and I will use it to its full extent to wipe your miserable ass off the face of the continent, you little shit. If only you could have known what unholy retribution your little clever comment was about to bring down upon you, maybe you would have held your fucking tongue. But you couldn't, you didn't, and now you're paying the price, you goddamn idiot. I will shit fury all over you and you will drown in it. You're fucking dead kiddo. Never get sold. Answer plus pro-life tip. Someone I knew in the military was walking through the galley with their hat on and a chief started to tell at him from behind. He was by no means stupid, but he started mouth breathing while looking at the chief with a vacant expression. At the end he actually got a pat on the shoulder. If someone you don't know is super angry and yelling, just start mouth breathing. Takes all the wind out of them. That's a power move and a half. How much they talk versus how much they actually say. Tried to tell my boss that I can't read her mind so the things she says to me have to be succinct, give all the information, and be accurate instead of telling me the same useless nonsense three time in a loop of insanity. She told me to stop telling her what she should do. I think we have the same boss. You poor soul.